Hello everyone and welcome to this installment of the Principles of Technique video series. Today we're going to be learning a guitar warm-up routine that was going to help teach you major scale patterns, pentatonic scale patterns, and the most common chords that exist in all the keys that we typically use in praise and worship music. This is going to be a five-part series. Uh, there will be one video that explains a new element of the warm-up and then a second video uh, that's a play-along for those elements. So all you have to do is turn on that video, play along to do your warm-up, and then go about your practice routine. It's important to do these warm-ups so that whenever you're practicing or performing or anytime you're going into a playing situation, you can get your hands and your mind ready for what you're about to do. All right, so if you haven't already, download the PDF that goes along with this document. You can find it on aokmusicandarts.com on the same page where you went to view these videos. It's got helpful information and also the diagrams, which are going to be necessary for you to look at so that you can learn these scales and chords. Okay, let's get started with scales. Now what we're going to be doing is learning scale patterns that show us all of the available notes from a certain scale in a certain area of the fretboard. Uh, traditionally when you're learning a scale, you start with the first note of the scale, you play all the way up or down until you get to the next note of the scale, and then you can go another octave or even another octave beyond that. What we're doing is a little different. We're just learning how to play all the notes from a certain key within a certain area of the fretboard. In this case, frets two through five is what we're going to be focusing on with major pattern seven. So if you're looking at the diagram, notice that the string closest to the bottom of the page on major pattern seven is your low E string. The string closest to the top of the page is your high E string. It's important to know that so that you can orient yourself properly whenever you're learning the notes. Let's begin learning the notes now. So if you look at the diagram, once again, you notice that above it there are fingerings. Finger one is over fret two, finger two is over fret three, finger three over fret four, finger four over fret five. This means that all of the notes in each of those frets are going to be played by the finger that is assigned to it. Everything in the second fret is played by finger one, everything in the third fret played by finger two, and so forth. Also, if you're looking at the notes on the fretboard, you see that they have numbers on them. These numbers are scale degrees. Scale degrees are simply the numbers that we assign to each note of the scale, the first note of the scale being one. One is very important because whatever note you place that on on the guitar, in this case it's on the third fret of the low E string, which is G, that means that we're playing the notes from a G major scale. You can move this anywhere on the neck and whatever note that scale degree one is becomes the key that you're playing in. We call this major pattern seven because the lowest note that's available in the pattern is seven, scale degree seven, but we don't start there. We're gonna start on scale degree one for this pattern. So we'll start with finger two on fret three. So let's begin playing there now. Go ahead and place your second finger on the third fret of the low E string. Play that with me now. Now the next note of the pattern has a two in it because it's scale degree two. You're gonna play with finger four on the low E string, fifth fret. Next note, finger one, second fret. Finger two, third fret. Finger four, fifth fret. From this point, I'm just gonna say finger numbers because we know what frets we're on. Next string, finger one. Finger three. Finger four. Finger one. Finger three. Finger four. Finger two. Finger four. Next string, finger one, finger two, finger four. Now we'll start here and go back down the scale. So start from your fourth finger on the high E string. Play. Finger two, finger one, finger four, finger two, finger four, Finger three, finger one, finger four, finger three, finger one, finger four, finger two, 
finger one, finger four, finger one, I'm sorry, finger two, finger one, and then finger two. We'll always come back to this point uh, with this pattern. We'll want to end on scale degree one. So that's how you play the pattern. Uh, you can pause the video now if you want to and practice this and learn it. Um, the next video will be the actual play along for the scale. So you can play along with it there uh, once you get to that point. In any case, we're gonna move on to pentatonic patterns now. So if you look down at the bottom of the page, you see we have what we call pentatonic pattern one. Now pentatonic patterns are different uh, because they have two names for each pattern. You can have a major version or a minor version. Uh, it depends on where you start in the scale. If you're looking at the diagram, the red notes are scale degree one for the minor pentatonic pattern. So in this case, that note is on the third fret, again, of the low E string, played with finger one. That note is a G. Therefore, this is a G minor pentatonic pattern because the red note is scale degree one for the minor version of the pentatonic pattern. The pinky, or the fourth fret, is on the green note. So if you see the green notes on your diagram, the first one on the low E string is played with your fourth finger. That note is scale degree one for the major pentatonic pattern. In this case, it's B flat. They're the same scale, meaning they, they, they contain the same set of notes, but they have two different names depending on where you start. In music, two keys that share the same set of notes are referred to as relative keys. So in this case, G minor, pentatonic, and B flat major pentatonic are relative keys because they share the same notes. It's important for us to know um, because if you're playing a song in the key of G minor, you wanna be able to use the right pentatonic scale or if you're in B-flat major, you want to be able to use the right pentatonic scale or whatever key you happen to be in. Okay, so let's start learning the pattern now. In this case, we're going to start with finger one on the third fret of the low E string. Now we're going to play finger four on the fourth fret, I'm sorry, the sixth fret of the low E string. Now finger one, third fret. Finger three, fifth fret. Finger one, third fret. Finger three, fifth fret. Now again, I'm just gonna start saying finger numbers at this point because we know what frets we're on. Finger one, next string. Finger three. Finger one. Finger four. Finger one. Finger four. Now we're going to go back down the scale, starting with finger four. Play it now. Finger one, finger four, finger one, finger three, finger one, finger three, finger one, finger three, finger one, finger four, finger one. So what we just played there is the G minor, minor pentatonic pattern. If we wanted to make it B flat major, we would do the same thing. We would simply start from the note that's shown in green on the pattern. Uh, so if you wanted to play this as a major pattern, just start from that note and play up and down the scale like we just did. Okay, so there are your two scale patterns that we need to know uh, for warm up routine one. It's important to know your scales, again, because as a musician, uh, uh, scales are a very important technique. Uh, they, they form the basis of harmony. Um, uh, they uh, help us know where we should be on the guitar neck, uh, what notes we should be using in certain keys. If you're soloing, then you can use uh, the key that corresponds to, oh, sorry. Can I pick up after I'm done with teaching the scale? So this is like, I played the last note of, of the scale. and finger one. So that's the G minor pentatonic pattern. If you wanted to make it B flat major, you would do the same thing. Just start with your fourth finger. 
So there you have it, major pattern seven and pentatonic pattern one. Uh, those are important to know because uh, as a guitar player, if you're soloing, uh, you know that you, if you're in the key of G major, you can use your G major scale now that you've just learned to solo over the tune or to make fills or a hook or something of that nature. Or you can use the appropriate pentatonic pattern, whether you're in a major or a minor key. Find the pattern, move it to the right point on the guitar neck to where scale degree one is on the note of the key that you're playing. And now you can solo and you have all of that language available to you as a guitar player. So learn those scales uh, and then come back and play along with them on the play along video. The next thing that we're going to do, um, the second part of this warm up, are chords. What we're going to be doing is learning the most common chords in the key of G and C and then playing them. Now chords can be built off of each note of a scale. They naturally occur in a certain order and we combine them to make chord progressions. We're going to be examining chord progressions that are based off of the major scale. So uh, for instance, in the key of G, common chords in the key of G or in any key are based off of the first note, the fourth note, the fifth note, and the sixth note of the scale. So in the key of G, if we go back to major pattern seven, a first note, scale degree one, is G. Scale degree four is C. Scale degree five is D. And scale degree six is E. One, four, five, six. Now the chords that are based off of these, uh, if we start with scale degree one, would be G. Scale degree four, it would be C. Scale degree five would be D. And scale degree six would be E minor. The, the sixth scale degree, the chord that's based off of that, is always a minor chord. So one, four, and five are major. Uh, the chord based off of the sixth scale degree will always be minor. So again, our chords in the key of G that are common are G, C, D, and E minor. If we go to the key of C, and I take this major pattern and I move it all the way up here until scale degree one is on C. No, uh, scale degree one is C, scale degree four is F, scale degree five is G, and scale degree six is A. So therefore, the one chord, which is major, will be C. The four chord, which is major, will be F. The five chord, which is major, will be G. And the six chord, which is minor, will be A minor. So again, we have one, which is C, four, F, five, G, six, A minor. Now if you look at the bottom of the page of the PDF, you see there's a little chart that has uh, the key of G and then the one, four, five, and minor six chords in that key, and then underneath it the key of C, one, four, five, minor six. We use the Roman numerals from now on to indicate uh, the, the number of the chord, one, four, five, or six, and then capital is major, lowercase is minor. So you see that the Roman numeral for six it uses lowercase letters, that indicates it's a minor chord. This is very important because chords often fall into certain common chord progressions that are the same no matter what key you're in uh, because, the, because the numbers correspond. Uh, and you should, as you listen to music, start to hear these different patterns now. They'll start to pop out to your ear. And it's important for you to know the numbers as well as the chords that you're playing so that you can familiarize yourself with these patterns. Okay, so that's the first part of our warm up. Seems like a lot, but once you actually boil it down to just playing the elements, you can do this in two or three minutes at home. Uh, I encourage you now to make sure that you know the scales and those uh, chords in G and C, and then go over to the play along pattern. Thanks. <laughs>